My name is Paul Harwood from EBSCO, and I'm your chair for this uh, panel session. Um, just a little bit of uh, introduction and context, if I may. 99% um, of you will recognize this actor. I'm absolutely sure about that. Um, fewer of you might recognize the character he played, um, but it is, of course, the, the real main title. This is, this is the subtitle up here, the, the rather long subtitle, but of course, what, uh, what preoccupied him in this film was Show Me the Money. That's the title of our, of our, uh, of our session. If you've seen the film, you'll know it's, um, there's a particularly key moment. He's playing a, a sports agent, and this agency is exploiting their sports stars, and uh, Jerry Maguire here wants to uh, become, come with a new ethical model for his sports stars, and uh, he gets left with one, one, one sports star who, who's totally fine with his new ethical model of looking after him, but he can't stop saying, show me the money. I want to see where my money's coming from now as a sports star and what it will mean for me when I retire, um, while a lot of Jerry's other customers just go disappearing out the door. There, is, there are some parallels. I'm not saying that um, in scholarly publishing there are more ethical models than others, but um, you know, when the whole debate about open access kicked off, there were suggestions that we could come with something which is better in, in lots of ways. Um, and uh, so I think uh, we, can, we can look to, to Jerry today uh, to remind us a little bit about that. Um, when, you, when you come to the bit here about the... Uh, oh, I've gone past it. Let me just go back and again. Um, the financial implications of publication payment models for researchers into music. It takes a little bit of time to get your head around it. So I just tried to um, give us a little bit of context. I just, on Friday, just Googled um, publication payment models and bang, up came uh, the Elsevier site with just two types of publication model, uh, very simple, really. One's a subscription model, one's an open access model. This could be a starting point for some of our discussion today, maybe not. There are people that want to go far beyond that, and if you follow the Max Planck proposal, they want to convert the whole world from a, from a subscription-based model to an open access one, claiming that it can be done overnight and with neutral costs. So it'll be interesting to see whether any of our panelists touch on, touch on that phenomenon. And of course, we're in, into the world now. We've gone from green to gold. I think we're in the world of platinum open access now, or so claims this particular publisher. And this is a, an, another different kind of model, just institutions and colleges coming together to fund, um, to fund publications. And of course, I think this is in the world of books, as is this one. So we're not just about journals today. I think we're about any kind of content, anything that uh, is published uh, that needs, in some fashion, paying for. So the session is not just about open access. It's not another session that a conference has. We've got to have something about open access. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it indifferent? Where is it going? It's not, I hope it's not going to be about that anyway, and we'll do you all a disservice if it is. And as I say, it doesn't have to be just about journals. I'm not sure what any of the panelists are preparing to say, but to my mind, it's an open, an open field in that regard. But it is about the financial implications of different publishing publication payment methods. So keep that in your, in your mind as we go. All I will try and do, and I, I don't need to do much to support this stellar cast that you've got in front of you really today, is just to try and keep us all honest and true to our objectives. Show me the money, the financial implications of doing things in a different way. Um, so in a minute, I'm going to ask Steve Hall to come up and uh, be our first uh, speaker. And they've been asked to speak for about five minutes on this theme uh, in this area. Um, what I will do, I'm not, not a, big, uh, a big person on, on Twitter, and lots of you are out there doing that. What I'm going to do is be um, a little bit old-fashioned, and just at the end of each brief presentation, just to get a show of hands from you, are you broadly sympathetic to what that speaker said? Are you broadly against what he or she said? Or are you fairly neutral on it? And it would just be useful to get a sense of how you feel, so please do listen carefully to the five-minute slots, and it would be he helpful to just to get a sense from you all of uh, how you feel those, those presentations go and whether they sway you in any way. And as much as anything, it's designed to try and warm you up a little bit, because I know if we just do five back-to-back -back of these and then I suddenly turn it over to you, it's the afternoon slot, da di da di da and I'm going to struggle to get you all going. So if we can have a bit of audience participation relatively early on, I think it'll, it'll help us all. Um, and as I say, just coming back again to keep the questions and discussion, and I'll do my best to keep the questions and the discussion focused on this business of money and the financial implications. And to help me do that, we'll keep Jerry up there for as long as we, as long as we can. Okay, that's enough from me for now. I'm going to hand over to our first presenter, um, Stephen Hall.